what happens when you take two serious anglers, drop them on an unknown body of water, and give them a mission to conquer the lake and each other. Like I said, mine's always bigger. Two different patterns, one unknown lake, with no practice and no preparation. Who will catch the most fish and how? The only way to find out is to go commando. The mission is simple. Two experienced anglers. Two different battle plans. Going head to head on one unfamiliar body of water. Steve Panaz takes us to the front line of fishing to learn the lessons of the Lake Commandos. You know, it's hard to manage expectations on a day like this. This isn't one of those days where you're gonna go out and murder them. I just, it's, I, I just don't feel like we're gonna catch a lot of fish. We're gonna have to grind it out. You already conceding? <laughs> conceding? <laughs> Early season bass hunting, it may be the most exciting time of year to be a lake commando. After a long cold winter, things are finally warming up and the underwater world is coming back to life. I can see bass up in your stuff. Well, you know this is gonna warm up this afternoon. It's out of the wind, it's, it's dark. dark bottom. We got riprap along here. Everything feels new and untouched. The kind of blank canvas that is perfect for a commando discovery mission. And it's the perfect fit for a veteran lake commando like Howard Tripp. I've known Howard Tripp for probably 25 years. This is a very serious angler. His whole goal career-wise to be involved in the outdoor business, the fishing business, and this guy is a good stick. Today's lake commando mission is to find and catch early season smallmouth and largemouth bass on a large natural lake under tough post-cold front conditions. Perhaps there are times when size doesn't matter, but when it comes to early season bass fishing, lake size and depth matters a whole lot in determining fish location and activity. Here are the details on today's battleground. At over 5,600 acres, today's lake is more than three times larger than any other lake in the area. But it is very shallow, with an average depth of 17 feet and a maximum depth of just 24 feet. But unlike most shallow lakes, the water here is very clear, with a recent Sechi disc reading over 13 feet. Habitat is abundant, featuring miles of rocky shoreline, numerous main lake points and humps, and a number of shallow mud bottom bays. There's also no lack of good cover, with a variety of submergent weeds, including cabbage, coontail, and eelgrass, as well as miles of shoreline rock and man-made docks. The forage base is dominated by a variety of minnow species, including healthy populations of golden shiners and spot tail shiners. The commandos are facing a serious post-cold front situation here. Air temps range from a bone-chilling 39 degrees to start the day to expected highs in the low 60s, and water temps will range just as widely from the upper 40s in the main lake to as high as 60 degrees in the shallow bays. Skies are clear with bright sunshine and light and variable winds. That's the battleground the lake commandos are facing, and we're about to find out their plan of attack. But we also want to know how you would fish it. So let us know online. For a rig today, I'm gonna to go with a drop shot rig and it's pretty a, a standard rig. I've got a 3 8 ounce weight down here. This one actually has a rattle in it. I've got a one-aught Mustad hook wide gap. I'm gonna fish a three inch rocket craw from Havoc. Uh, this is a great small compact bait. I'm probably gonna pull the pinchers off just for, to make it a little more compact. I'm fishing it on 10 pound, 100% fluorocarbon from Trilene. Fluorocarbon is nice in this clearer water. They can't see the line, but it's also very dense and allow me to keep this rig near the bottom. I'm fishing it on a seven foot Veritas rod from Abu Garcia. It's got a, a, a fast tip that's a little bit softer uh, that'll absorb some head shakes, but give me good sensitivity. In terms of a reel, I'm going with a spinning reel. This is a Revo from Abu. It's a small, compact reel, but it's got a great drag system. This is the rig that's gonna put fish in a boat, and this is the rig that's gonna beat Howard. Steve, 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 you gotta love his confidence. 
The setup I'm going to start with today is a uh, new Havoc flat dog. It's a kind of a pencil bait. It's flat on two sides. I can fish it like a jerk bait or I can let it drop and when it drops it flutters. I'm using 14 pound green nanofill. It's a no stretch line. This is the Fluger Patriarch. It's got a 5 1 to 1 gear ratio and I've got this reel mounted on a 6 foot 9 inch Fenwick Elite Tech smallmouth rod in medium action and uh, I think Steve's going to have a little bit of a problem this afternoon. As is common early in the season, finesse is going to be the key to catching these pre-spawn post-front fish. But will it be the compact and vertical drop shot? Or the long cast subtlety of the flat dog? Or will the guys have to adjust and come up with something completely different? Let's go commando and find out. While both smallmouth and largemouth are present here, this lake is much better known for its smallmouth. So the commandos start by searching for smallies with Steve's drop shot rig. Keep in mind, each commando will get two full hours to run the boat and prove they've got the right plan. In the end, whoever bags the most bass will be today's top commando. It was raining yesterday, blew hard all night long. Got up this morning, it was cold, 39 degrees. And so I thought if the smallmouth are catchable and they're where we can find them, we'll get them on drop shot. The problem is they just weren't up on the rocks like I yep. thought they'd or I'd hoped they would be. All right, first bite. 12 incher, but it's first fish. <laughs> I thought I thought it was 10 bucks for first fish. Isn't that traditionally the way that works? I like the fact. Right? That out here. Okay. The veteran is beating Panaz at his own game but neither guy is satisfied with the drop shot bite yet. And one thing we know for sure, when you're dealing with a lake commando, something is going to change. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life, Trilene, Angler's Trust, Berkeley Trilene, Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time, Nanofill, the next generation in fishing line. And by Fishhound. When to go, where to go, what to throw. There are certain times of year when it really helps to have a lot of experience to fall back on. Early in the year when things are changing fast is one of those key times. But it's nothing new to a tested veteran like Howard Tripp. Howard has been both a successful tournament angler and tournament organizer for many years, with several wins to his credit. He's also an inventor of outdoor products and is the owner of a successful outdoor marketing company called Revo Brand Group. It's 1130. We've got one 12 inch fish in the boat. The bad news is I hadn't caught it. So we're really struggling right now. Water has warmed up a little bit. It started out at 48 degrees, we're up at 49 degrees, which is positive. We got good sun. The wind has not picked up a lot. We've been throwing these drop shot rigs for over two hours. <laughs> oh, over two hours. <laughs> for over two hours. I, I thought the thing was, you know, you get to, then the other guy gets to, but I think if you're Steve, kind of, and you're the, you know, you're the star, you get a, use more than your time because, well, this boat and this camera, and <laughs> I guess. So. We fished a little over two hours with the drop shot. I was convinced this was the way to go. Finally. Oh my gosh. <laughs> let's go. All right. Let's go where the fish are. The problem was when you have a certain window to catch fish, you've got to take advantage of the things that are, are happening and, and the weather patterns and that sort of thing. So we're headed over to this northeast corner. I'm looking to get out of the wind completely. I'm looking for dark bottom. I'm looking for structure cover in the water. I'm looking for rock, logs, vegetation, lily pad roots, cattails. I'm looking for anything with a dark bottom that's got stuff in the water. So shallow water fish, if they're on the, fat, on the flats, they're feeding. If I can find bass on the flats, I'm pretty sure I can catch them because they're there to feed. First bite of the day is the wrong species. <laughs> is, that, is that like a negative? Is that a, that, you lose points for that or what? Uh, no, didn't catch him. <laughs> There's some fish right there and those are bass. 
Those are bass, Howard, right there. We had to make casts way beyond normal. At first, when we moved in there, I was throwing fluorocarbon, thinking that the clear water and the, yep. and the fact that these fish, uh, no, I didn't really believe there were fish in there at first, but the fluorocarbon, I figured in the clear water was our best bet. Howard stuck right away with the nanofill, knowing that his cast would be tremendously longer than any other fishing line. The question I have is, are you taking full credit for that after I pointed the fish out to you? I'll let the viewers decide. Whose hook is it on? <laughs> we made the right move to move shallow. We made the right move to move to a northern bay and an area that had protected waters. It was the warmest water in the system, and it held fish. You know, it's amazing what warm water can do. We've, we've gone up a full 10 degrees from that side of the point to this side of the point, just because we're in protected water, dark bottom, good sun, and the fish are so much more active in here. That fish actually chased this flat dog. What was really cool about this is it got those two flat sides and so it changed the way the bait fell and it would uh, slowly uh, flutter as it went down and it was perfect actually for that kind of wacky rig style that we were doing and I, I was pretty impressed. It had a good density meaning I could cast it a mile. It's a better fish. I got one. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh yeah, a double after all that slow fishing. You know what I did? I cast where you caught that one. <laughs> I didn't tell you, I saw a school there. <laughs> Let's just see who's bigger. Yep. Mine's always bigger. <laughs> the commandos have tracked down the active bass and the hot bait. Now we find out who's got the hot hand. This segment of Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yeti Coolers. Yeti, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. The Lake Commandos are on an early season bass fishing mission. They've located some active largemouth in a shallow bay, and the action is about to start heating up. No, no, no. <laughs> <Don't lose it. laughs> Oh gosh, look at that drag, Jim. <laughs> nice, Howard, nice fish. These are getting bigger, by the way. Yeah, they are. Actually, I'm just fan casting. Oh, and, yeah. And covering as much water as I can. <laughs> look at that one chasing it. Look at that, another one right there, another one right there. Get him in and out. These are nice fish. L let's see. These are, these are good fish, man. Look at that. Like I said. Always bigger. You know, the toughest fish to catch after a major front like we had last night are our giant fish. We caught some really nice bass today. We had some fish that were pushing maybe three pounds, and in this body of water, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. Man, that is strong stuff, isn't it? It is awesome. I started fishing Nanofill last year. Uh, it's a, it was a new line from Berkeley, and I really, really like it on a spinning reel. It lays on nicely, it doesn't kink, uh, and it casts effortlessly. And you can get a smaller diameter uh, on your reel. Awesome. Besides line choice today, I made another mistake. One is I fished a hook that was a little bit small. Howard was running probably a four, maybe even a five-aught wide gap hook, and at first I thought he was crazy. How many is this? You're up by three. I mean two. <laughs> My thought was that it looked too big for the bait and that it would make it fall too fast in that shallow water. But I don't know if it matters. I'm using a little bigger hook than you as well. Yeah. And I think that helps a little bit with just a little bit of weight on the bait. I'm gonna get to fall just a little bit faster. You know, Howard, I learned something today. A bay like this, when we first pulled in here, I thought, no cover. It's not a mud bottom. There's hardly any cover or any, any depth even. It's, it's real shallow through the whole thing. And we started seeing the temperature difference and we started, we saw a carp and we thought, ah, there's not enough here. But boy, I've learned something. This is a great spot, just simply for the water temperature. Well, I think the water temperature and there's just enough vegetation on the bottom that those fish can get here and feed. There's probably minnows, there's probably some crayfish in here. And uh, if, you know, we were on the main part of the lake, there was no vegetation at all. And we know largemouth, they, they love that. So this bay actually, I'm guessing that they spawn on this flat once this milfoil gets up a little bit, and they're probably spawning in this milfoil out in the middle of this little flat. 
But this is just, this looks like someone took an ice cream scooper and just yep. went down the thing. It's, it's not that deep. There, you got bit. We are finding fish. Ooh, nice one. We are finding fish in the vegetation. They're not up on these sand flats as much. We're, we're casting over the dark spots, but uh, it works. That's a nice fish. It is a nice fish. That's the best one yet. Get this rod out of the way. All right, all right. Good one. You know, on a day that started awful slow, you know, all of a sudden we've got what, 13, 14 bass in the boat, and good fish. Solid. Yeah, not giants, but good. Not ones. giants. Solid. Fun. The veteran Howard Tripp has the hot stick right now, but you can never count on an experienced commando like Steve Finan. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yamaha Marine. Reliability starts here. Gulp Alive. Looks, feels, tastes alive. Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. Not too kinky. No kinks ever. And by Humminbird. Simply, clearly better. You know, I intended really to start out fishing uh, that flat dog, uh, Texas style, and like a jerk bait. And I quickly kind of uh, switched that to the wacky rig, um, just based on the performance of the, of the lure. Howard. Yeah. Where'd the rest of the flat dogs go? I think we're out. No way. I know there's a bunch left. No, I think they're all gone. I think you used the last one. Well, how'd that get there? You know what it's like to fish with him? <laughs> you know, the bait we fished today was called the Havoc Flat Dog. It's the first time I ever fished a bait, and I had, I guess, three or four packages of them, uh, and, and some of them were samples, so there was only one or two baits in the package. So really, we had maybe 15 of these baits in the boat and in a variety of colors, but only one of some colors and uh, several black ones. Look at that one. All right. Oh, that's a hog. Look at that. Nice. That's that's a nice one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, baby. Look All at right. that one. They're looking up. <laughs> that is a tank. I wasn't surprised that we caught fish there. Um, I was happy we caught fish there, uh, and I'm glad it worked out. But I, I was pretty confident that that area based on every, all the research I'd done and what I'd looked at, it, it just seemed like a no-brainer. Howard, I don't think you've had anywhere near this size. You got, you got, you know, numbers, but you're not, you're lacking in size. That is a nice bass. You know, today I got beat, but today I'm the winner because I learned something about a technique and a, and a, a fishing, a type of water that I, it's not natural for me. I grew up in natural lakes fishing real deep water or in, in clearer waters. And there were times when we moved up into the shallow stuff, I, I'm saying to myself, this is, this is too shallow, this is wrong, there's no cover, there's, there's no reason for these fish to be there. And I was flat out wrong. It was fun to be in the boat with Steve. Uh, it was really fun to beat him again. Uh, I have to say that that's uh, always a lot of fun because he, he's a great hook. The keys to success today, there were really three of them. Number one, finding the warmest water in the system. We went from 48 degrees in the main lake to as high as 64 in back of these bays. We found active fish and we found them shallow. The second key was fishing a new bay from Havoc called the Flat Dog. You can see it's kind of a, uh, a flat, two-sided bay, but oval this way. And when it's hooked wacky style, it would wobble on the way down. And when you'd pull it forward, it would actually fold over and wobble this way and then wobble on the way down. The bass absolutely loved it. Number three is hook selection. Howard was fishing a much larger hook than I was today. He went with a four-aught wide gap hook. I was fishing a one-aught. The heavier wire made a bigger difference in the way the bait fell, and I believe it was a key to a success. So when you figured you're gonna win the competition, what uh, was going through your mind? Wow, you mean when we left the hotel this morning? Howard's not one of those guys that likes to win and quietly go away. I'm sure he's going to ask for a dollar or a signature on something so he could put it on his wall. And the next time I see him, he's going to point to it. That's the kind of guy he is. <laughs>
Uh. I'm Captain George Mitchell. This is Coastal Chaos. I really love drifting live baits around these offshore work boats. It's a great way to catch yellowfin tunas. Sounds simple, but it's not. Set and drift are the effects of wind and current on your boat. Not as predictable as you may think, and there are some surprises. To eliminate the guesswork, I rely on my electronics to get a read on what's truly happening. The Furuno Navnet TZ Touch has some really cool features. See this data box? I keep it set on course over ground and bearing. That way, with just a glimpse, I can see if I'm on my desired drift. Now look at my boat icon. See the red arrow pointing away from it? That's my course over ground vector. It tells me not only my boat's exact heading, but also where I will be in 10 minutes. This information is priceless. It helps me keep my baits in the red zone. And there's more. Once a pattern is developed, I can look at my track and detect any changes in water temperature, even hundreds of a degree. Detailed information like this is what helps me and you consistently catch more fish. For more info on the TZ Touch, check out FarunoUSA.com.